Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I'd just like to talk to you a little bit today about the two tenets of life on this planet which are free will and the all. Okay, so starting with free will, um, one of the most interesting features of this planet because of its long t intervals that it 11,000 year interval that it spends not within the photon belt of the Pleiades is the diversity of choices that are available here because of the um, soul wounding that occurs and the uh, closing down of the axiotonal lines of light the tangles that develop in the body of light the inability to connect with the star library in um, Alpha Centauri, and a, a general disconnect from our star brethren of many different civilizations and cultures that, that leads us to, to a foreshortened notion of history and of our choices during the, these long ages of darkness, but one of which we've just emerged from. So, so we have these many choices based on basically ignorance, with what Patanjali calls ignorance, soul ignorance. And uh, so something may look very good to us as a choice that in fact leads, leads us away from an understanding of our soul purpose and our soul wisdom and leads us out of alignment with the divine, with the all, which I'll be discussing in a minute. And so this happens because we have free will. There are beings that it were settled on this planet that further uh, the possibilities of duality during the dark ages. They don't do well here during the ages of light. So um, my understanding is that they're shunted off to uh, astral negative worlds, planets in other constellations during the times of light. But they're here for a purpose during the times of dark, and that is to increase the possibility of soul learning through duality. You may have seen uh, those pictures of, um, of people with an angel on one shoulder and a, and a little devil on the other shoulder, each whispering into the person's ears, right? That's just a visualization of the choices available through duality. But it also has within it the two different types of beings that are here on Earth. Okay, we have the angelic realm and the David realm is part of that and the nature spirits are part of the angelic realm as well. Although they comprise a whole separate and very varied David kingdom. Then we have the uh, Ifrits and the, uh, the Jinn and the demon world. Okay, and all of those are based on the notion of power over others. And so it can be very compelling, very interesting to choose that because it seems like in the short run there's something in it, right? Something really important in it. And so uh, people do, do make those choices during the ages of darkness. Right now they're emerging from that. And one of the features of, of, of the ascension process, the ascension into the age of light, is that the choice between um, dark and light becomes much more dramatic. And so the, there's a purpose for that. That is so that it would become very apparent to people that they have that choice. And so people will be choosing either something very dramatic like, you know, serial killing or, or uh, suicide or uh, all kinds of things that would before have been completely impossible for them to think of. Or they will be choosing, very strongly choosing alignment with the divine because nothing is definite right now. Everything is is in process, in flux, and in and kind of a mental chaos is occurring all over Earth as people come back into their powers and their ascension skills and begin to realize that they are, that they are one with everything, okay? So these choices are available. We can choose to go off-world uh, to astral negative planets along with the de demon realm, which is 
there to help us make these decisions and choices along with the angelic realm or we can choose to stay on ascended or ascended earth and 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 that's a completely different choice so one of the things that's coming up right now has to do with this free will choice it has to do with um, the notion kind of a Himmler or Hitler notion that the ends justify the means right remember Hitler had a very beautiful notion about a master race on earth and a master plan and how everything was going to be better because he was going to eliminate all the bad things right and he was going to do that through killing people that he thought were inferior right and and this 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 process is is this this thought that the ends justify the means is is something to consider because we confront it every day in our in our daily lives you know I will say to somebody, um, it would be better if you lived in the country, and they will say, oh, I can't because I have to make a living, right? <laughs> and, and, or, and this is just one example of the constant I can't and I won't that uh, don't allow people to accumulate more light, that instead they want to accumulate more darkness, right? Depending on the person, I mean, some people are fine in the city. Um, so do the ends justify the means, you know? What is it that we really want? Do we want... To, to accomplish our soul mission and follow our soul purpose? Or do we want something for someone, for ourselves, for our family, uh, that, that won't allow us to live to our highest light? And is it worth it, say, to do something extremely bad, like happened in the concentration camps and is happening right now, today, in many places because of the ascension process? Is it okay to do that if it, if it justifies some high cause, such as keeping someone alive that we really love, you know, for instance, because prices are very high right now, or is it okay to do that kind of work because we have to pay the rent, the rents are very high, you know, the kind of work that, that tears down other people's good, you know, or compete, competes with other people instead of bringing on the harmony of the universe, that kind of work. Are we willing to, to, like, to like injure other people so that our in-group can be okay? Well, in past ages, in the age of darkness, the answer was definitely yes, you know. The answer was, the people in my family are more important than anyone else in the world. The people in my village will help support me against the barbarian hordes, and, and I, will, I will help them out, too, you know, like that, right? And people that were considered to be the out-group in the old days, can't even have a chance, you know. You sacrifice the out group, you keep the in group, and the inner out group is the one that you really care about. The history of kings in Europe is is, is a saga about that. You know, even in their own families, they would kill just to maintain their own highest personal welfare. Kill their brothers and sisters over and over again so that there would be no contenders for for the throne. And this is an extreme example of free will. You know, and choosing for the basis not of society or civilization or the upliftment of the world, but instead choosing only for oneself, right? So I'm asking to look at that today. How is your life being lived? What is it that you truly want? Do you want to align with God or do you want to take on a, a purpose that has to do with your personal desires and needs or those of your family? Are those of someone that you really cherish and you want to just say to heck with what society teaches about getting along with other people about things like the Ten Commandments thou shalt not kill thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife and all that right all those things that were hammered out in the old tribal days as ways for society to continue onward okay what is it that you really want okay do you want to, the ends to be more important than the means? Or do you want the harmony of the all? And so now, we're coming down to the harmony of the all. The all, okay? And that has to do with in-group, out-group. And the way that we think about, uh, uh, about the world. As it turns out, there is no in-group. There is no out-group. There is no special treatment for people that are very rich or very um, powerful or, or who f think very well of themselves for, they, for no particular reason at all, all right? We here in the newosphere 
we feel in our own physical bodies as the ascension proceeds the suffering, the anguish of what was once called the huddled masses, okay, of the people in prison, of the people who are dying in hospitals, of the newborn children who don't yet know where or what is going on, okay. So, so we are that, and this is this is an ascension skill that will change everyone's mind about in groups and out groups and the means and the ends, okay? We are that, and far, form, far more than these beings known as humankind in this colony called Earth, okay? There are many other peoples here. There are many other beings here. Four-footed, four-footed, two-footed, and feathered beings, all kinds of beings here on Earth, okay? And there are many more beings in this in amongst the stars and amongst our ancestors and in our future kin all of which are one in the eternal now which is the all ah enough lectures y'all take care love you lots <laughs>